Uh, would you please pray with me uh, as we look, to look at God's Word? Uh, Heavenly Father, we ask that by the written Word and by the preached Word, we would see the living Word and through Him live. If you could get your Bibles back open. Amen. Sorry. If you, if you could get your Bibles open uh, back to page 968, we're going to be looking at uh, those five verses. Um, Jesus said some lovely things that many of us will be really familiar with. We know those comfortable words, come to me all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. Turn the other cheek, forgive those who sin against you. Lovely, comforting words that we as Christians love that our Savior said to us. But sometimes Jesus says things that, if we're being really honest, we'd rather he hadn't. Sometimes he says things that make him sound a little bit extreme. He says things we'd rather he didn't say. Of course, he said things that people of his day hated so much that they killed him for it. And today, we're looking at one of those offensive things that Jesus said. But maybe you didn't quite pick up on it. If you're visiting with us today, we've been dipping in and out of a series uh, here at St. Thomas's called Questions from Jesus. Maybe if you're a visitor, you have questions about Jesus, and that's great, and we would love, love, love to talk to you about them. Maybe you've got questions for Jesus. Why are things the way they are? Again, we would love to talk to you about those. But today, Jesus has a question for us. He's not in the dock, we are. And his question is, who is my mother and brothers? In other words, who are my family? Let me ask you at the start, what do you think makes someone a member of God's family? If you're a note taker, we're gonna have three points. Um, pretty straightforward, who's not in God's family, who is in God's family, and how to join God's family uh, as we work through this passage. So firstly, who's not in God's family? Of course, that's a very offensive question to ask today, isn't it? Who's not in God's family? Who am I to ask that question? E even worse, I'm, I'm going to propose an answer to that question uh, from the pages of the Bible, which is even worse. Who's not in God's family? Well, let's go back to the passage and see what it says. Look at verse 46. When Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother and brothers stood outside wanting to speak with him. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. He replied to them, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Complete this sentence for me. Blood runs thicker than water. Family is so, so important, isn't it? Uh, one, of the Irish, one of the great Irish poets, George Bernard Shaw, said that a happy family is but an earlier heaven. But of course, for many of us, family is far from an earlier heaven, isn't it? For those of us who have strained families, we know that family can be really, really difficult. But what I think that tells us, whether we've got a really, really good family life or a really strained family life, both of those things tell us that family is really, really important. The reason that family strain is so difficult and so painful is because of how important family is. It's the possibility, the hope of good family relations that make bad family relations so painful. You might not get on well with your neighbor. You might not even know your neighbor's name, but we don't really worry about that. Why? Because they're not family. Family life is really, really important. And it was even more important, if you can imagine that, in Jesus' day. Because you see, family was everything. Your job was dictated by your family. Your house was dictated by your family. Your spouse was dictated by your family family was absolutely everything. And so what Jesus says here is shockingly offensive. Who are my mother and brothers? And to make matters worse, he identifies 
other people outside of his family as members of his family, with his biological family standing at the door. So he denounces his biological family standing at the door. He identifies this ragtag bunch of disciples as his actual family, and he does it in front of a crowd. Imagine I stood up here with my mum and my brother standing at the door, and I tore up my birth certificate. That'd be a pretty significant, shocking thing to do. Can you see how shocking what Jesus says here is? Why on earth is he saying this? Well, if you're familiar with Matthew's gospel, even if you were to skim through chapter 12 of Matthew alone, you'd see that Jesus has been saying some pretty outlandish things. In verse 8, he calls himself the Lord of the Sabbath. In verse 30, he declares that whoever is not with me is against me. In verse 34, he calls the religious leaders a brood of vipers, which isn't a million miles off calling someone a son of a, well, you get the picture. He declares in verse 42 that someone greater than Solomon, Israel's greatest king, is with them, and he's referring to himself. And now he's publicly denying his own family. Is Jesus just having a bit of a bad day? Got up on the wrong side of bed? Maybe he missed his breakfast? No, Jesus is telling us something really, really important. He's telling us that mere physical allegiance is not enough to be counted as a member of God's family. Let me say that again. Mere physical allegiance is not enough to be counted as a member of God's family. What that means is that it's very possible to be very religious but not be a part of God's family. It's very possible to look like a member of God's family, but not actually be a part of God's family. It was even possible to share DNA with Jesus and not be a part of God's family. So what this causes us to ask ourselves, and what I want to ask you, are you a member of God's family? If you are, how did you become a member? We're on point two. Who is in God's family? Let me ask you again, who do you think is in God's family? We know, don't we, that there's this idea both out there in the world and in here in the church sometimes that we're all a part of God's family. We're all God's children, aren't we? Well, what Jesus seems to be saying here is the exact opposite of that. And in fact, what the Bible's consistent message is, Old and New Testament, is that not everyone is a child of God. The best lies always contain a half-truth, don't they? We saw that in the garden when the serpent tempted Adam and Eve. He said, eat this fruit and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Well, there was, there's a truth in that. But of course, he was, he was a liar too. The best truths contain The best lies, sorry, contain half-truths. Well, that's what's going on with this, we're all God's children. There's a half-truth in there. We are all God's creatures, but we are not all God's children. We are not all brothers and sisters with the Son of God. So who then is in God's family? Well, let's see what Jesus says again, verse 49. Pointing to his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Notice Jesus says two things here. First, he says, These guys are my family. And then the second thing he says is, Whoever does the will of God, will of my Father, is my family. So what Jesus is saying is, to us, if we do the will of the Father, we too can become his brothers and sisters. Or to put it another way, if we do the will of the Father, he becomes our Father too. 
That's who's in God's family, whoever does the will of the Father. That's the birth certificate. That's the DNA test. Not outward physical appearance, but doing the Father's will. Jesus talks about this throughout Matthew's gospel. Listen to this from chapter 21. He's talking to the religious leaders. What do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered. But later he changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did what his father wanted? Well, it's obvious it's the first one, isn't it? You see, the second one, the one who said he would obey his father, he looked like he was going to obey his father, but he didn't. And the first son, he looked like he was going to disobey his father, but in the end, he obeyed. The original word there, changed his mind, also means regret. The first son regretted his actions and his attitude. He turned and obeyed. Don't be fooled by outward appearances. It's entirely possible to look like a member of God's family, but not be a member at all. Jesus is telling this story to the religious leaders, to the ministers, to the bishops, to the professors at the theological college. And immediately after telling them this story of the two brothers, he says, truly I tell you, tax collectors and prostitutes will go into the kingdom of God before you. Don't judge a book by its cover. Don't let outward appearance, even your own outward appearance, deceive you. Earlier in Matthew, Jesus said in chapter 7, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Again and again and again and again in Matthew, the will of God the Father comes up. And hopefully you're seeing that doing the will of God is crucial for being a part of God's family, for, getting, for gaining entrance to the kingdom of heaven. So what is the will of God? How can we do it? How can we join God's family? I have some of the ugliest hands um, of anyone I've ever met. They're chunky. They're not good for precise work. My fingernails only come up halfway up my finger. You know how most people's fingernails go to the end of their finger? Mine's at least halfway, at, at best halfway up my fingers. They're awful, awful, ugly hands. And it's not because I bite my nails. Um, my mom tells the story that the moment I was born, I came out and she held me and she looked down at my hands and she said to my dad, he's got your hands. One of my biggest fears is if God ever gives me a daughter, that she will have my hands. It's, it's my big fear. It's Jody's big fear. It, it, it's an awful thing. There are, we have lots and lots of different family resemblances and traits, don't we? And the older you get, the more you see your mom and your dad, and you, you find yourself saying things, doing things uh, that used to drive you insane, and, and yet you find yourself doing that. Or you look in the mirror and you think, oh, hang on, I kind of look like my mom, don't I? What do you think the family trait of God's family is? Well, hopefully you've seen again and again and again that it's not biological, it's not short fingernails or a Roman nose, it's doing the will of the Father. That is the family trait of God's family. Whoever does God's will, he is a part of the family. But how do we know what God's will is? Some people think that you need to listen to the church to find out what God's will is. That the minister at the front, he is the one who dispenses God's will to the people. Others think that God's will is what you feel. I feel that God told me to. But how do you know that that was actually God that told you to do that? And it wasn't just, you know, that seafood you ate last night's repeating on you. If only there was some way to know what God's will is. If only he left us a document a book even, to know what His will is. It's what we've got in our hands right now. 
there's only one way to know for sure what God's will is, and that's to read His will, the testament that He's left for us. And that's exactly what's going on in these verses. Do you see? Who does Jesus say are his, his, mother, his brother and sisters? It's his disciples. His disciples are doing the will of God, according to Jesus. What are they doing? They're sitting, listening to Jesus. You know the will of God by listening to the Word of God. So, let's recap. We've seen who's not in God's family. Mere physical allegiance is not enough to be counted as a member of God's family. It's possible to look very religious. It's possible to look like a member of the family. It was even possible to share DNA with Jesus, but not be a part of God's family. We've seen who is in God's family. It's those who do the will of the Father. Jesus says it again and again and again. And we've seen that you can, so we can join God's family. Whoever does the will of God can be in God's family. How you join God's family? It's by doing the Father's will. We began by looking at the question that Jesus asked, who is my mother and brother? If you're a Christian today, if you're someone who is seeking to do the will of the Father, let me ask you, who do you think is in God's family? my suspicion is, is, as I look at my own heart and as I talk to other people, that so often Christians can believe the lie that everyone is a child of God. And so often, rather than share the gospel with someone, rather than explain to them who Jesus is and what He has done and what He requires, we assume, oh, well, they're a pretty good person. They'll, they'll figure it out on their own. Rather than invite someone to church, especially a service where the gospel is going to be really, really clearly presented, we say, oh, they'll come when they're ready. Well, friends, that's not what the Bible says. In fact, the very last thing that Jesus says in Matthew's gospel, which we're looking at, is go to the nations and tell them. He doesn't say, wait for the nations to come to you. I wonder, is our lack of evangelistic zeal, our energy in sharing the gospel with people, our weakness in that, is that maybe because we've believed the lie a little bit, that everyone's a child of God? If you're not a Christian here today, if you're not yet a child of God, the amazing news of this passage is that Jesus doesn't just point out who is in God's family. He says that you too can join God's family. Anyone can join, even me, even you. But to become a member of God's family means submitting to His will, not our own. And that's really, really difficult. Submitting to God's will means trusting in Jesus' death on the cross to pay for our sins and living a new life with His Father as our Father, following His will and not our own. I'm about to pray a prayer asking God to give all of us a new heart that seeks to do His will. If you are not yet a member of God's family, you can pray this prayer after me and become a member of God's family. It is that easy. And if you do, please tell someone. Tell the person that you came with, tell myself or Simon or any of the other ministers here, tell anyone who's got a printed sticker name tag, who's a member of St. Thomas's here. We would love to chat to you about it afterwards. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for sending your Son into the world, the one who perfectly obeyed your will, yet who died to take the punishment for our disobedience. Father, please change our hearts to listen to and obey your will. Give us faith to trust in Jesus' work for us. Give us hope to spur us on to obey your will, especially when it's hard. And give us love. Give us love for each other as brothers and sisters in Christ.
and love for those who are not yet members of your family. Give us love strong enough that we would point them to Christ. And we ask this in his precious name. Amen.